Sitka spruce swamps are both some of the rarest wetlands left in Washington State, but also some of the most important for um, salmon rearing. This slough has been disconnected from the main river for, I think, around 75, 80 years, looking at the age of the trees. These tidal spruce swamps are really productive areas for juvenile salmon who are rearing, trying to grow as fast as they can before they hit the ocean. The bigger they are, the less likely they are prey for somebody larger than them. So we're at the Middle Fork Hoquiam Tidal Restoration Project, which is a property owned by the Chehalis River Basin Land Trust. The Land Trust acquired thousands of acres in the watershed, and we were able to protect them um, since about the late 1900s. Where I'm standing was a log dump that was started way back in the 1890s by the Polson brothers. So they had a steam uh, engine railroad that would come down this pile railroad line over the main fork coquium and dump up to a million board feet of timber into the stream every day and then use tugs to take that downstream to the mills. In southwest Washington, basically all the logs that were logged ended up right here. 300 years ago, what would happen is the tide would come up, it would engage over half a mile of channel system that was surrounded by spruce swamp. What happened after about 100 years ago was that a railroad was built, dredge spoils were placed. Our earth has rhythm to it. Tides move and exchange. This system was just blocked up and it was static. And when they did that, um, you know, kind of without thinking into the future here, they, they plugged off access to this whole slough from the river and that tidal system. About half of it had no tides whatsoever. So by taking out the dredge spoils and taking out pieces of the railroad, we now take the full tide cycle that, that happens in the river, and we're extending that over this full 90 acres. The tide's gonna be able to flow in and out of here twice a day, bringing fish and food together. We are just at the beginning of, of implementing, opening up a 100 foot wide tidal slough channel that was completely blocked by dredging associated with this log dump activity. We've got equipment working their way in here. This project is going to involve a number of things in order to open this tidal channel. We're going to have to take out a lot of these trees to recreate this channel connection. You know, things are a bit messy when we do restoration work. I always like to say we have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. One of the first things is that we're going to bring in a very large crane to this site. There's hundreds and hundreds of piling here that we'll have to remove in order to facilitate that channel, once again, being able to flow freely in and out of the river. You hear restoration, you obviously know about tree planting, uh, volunteer events, but this is big equipment on a big scale. We have to recognize that the damage was done over a long period using a lot of resources. And in order to wind the clock back, we have to undo that damage. And it takes time, it's complex, and it can be expensive. I like to think about, you know, 5, 10, 50 years or 100 years in the future, what is this going to look like? All the tidal channels are there. It's just sitting there waiting to breathe again. So this project is probably going to take us all summer to do. Multiple excavators out here working all this down. Just gigantic football field worth of soil to dig out 20 feet deep. Those fills are going to rebuild little ridge points that the railroad grade cut through. Eventually, um, we will be down to one small dike, essentially, that we will then take out completely during one low tide cycle. And as the tide flushes in for the first time in nearly a century, we'll be back to tide cycles twice a day again for for eternity, hopefully. And 
We started at 11 o'clock at night and we've been working ever since. It's taken us, uh, boy, three months to clear the trees, open up the site, but we've been up all night trying to work the tide as it went out to remove the first of two berms. One's holding the river back. Now that we've got that removed, the tide's coming in. It's six in the morning. It's taken all this time to open that last bit up. This is the first time the tide has come into this slough in a hundred years. We just keep watching it, you know, inch by inch. Tide's coming home. The timing of this last phase was orchestrated literally to the hour, if not to the minute. The work that needed to happen here had to be coordinated with the level of the water um, so, so that you don't have too much pressure on any one point. As soon as this berm has been removed later today, this water will be able to move back and forth freely, as will the fish uh, through this area. We are at the final reconnection point of this project. It's also exciting because we've been digging for 90 days just to get to this moment this morning. We're just recharging habitat that has been hidden uh, behind these dredge spoils for a century now. And so getting this main breach done here behind me was the, the big part of our project. It was all or nothing and we made it. It's more than just the salmon, it's, it's what goes out to the community too through the proxy of us being here doing the work. These are people that have worked in this community with this skill set. It's a big opportunity for people in these small rural communities. That's what they grew up doing and uh, we need them to, to keep doing it because they're the best at it. So. It's really amazing to see this take shape as we finally open this channel up and we see water in it you know, for the first time in 100 years. What we needed to do to fix it was really remove fairly small pieces to reconnect the rest of it that is actually still there and still functioning. And that really made this a really powerful project. This is a regionally significant project in the size of the scope, the benefits to fish. Now I can come back and see ecological systems recreated, showing such promise. This is not just digging out a chunk of earth for a new development or something. We are restoring the function of these natural systems. That's gonna reap benefits for generations to come. We have now the responsibility to protect it forever. <laughs>